Hello, I am Ashley, and today I will be talking about global climate change dealing with albedo. Global climate change is a big issue right now. There are many different reasons for it. One of them is decline in albedo. Let's start off with some basic information, shall we? You might be wondering, what is albedo? Albedo is the amount of radiation reflected by a surface. This is measured by a number between 0 to 1. 1 means there's 100% reflection and 0 means there's no reflection. The little diagram at the side shows how albedo works. Next we have energy budget. This is all the gains of incoming energy and all the losses of outgoing energy. The third term is radiative equilibrium. This is when the flow of incoming energy is balanced by the equal flow of heat to space. This is a diagram which shows the Earth's energy budget, and it shows how the incoming solar energy goes through different processes and has different flows. There are different albedo values for different surfaces. For example, albedo for deserts are around one-third. Albedo for snow and ice usually range around 0.6 to 0.9. There is an average albedo for the Earth and it's around one-third, it's around 0.31. The ice albedo feedback is very important. This is the basically the cycle in which the snow and ice melt. Less energy is reflected, which means more heat is absorbed by the ground and water, and that warms the Earth. And the increase in temperature causes more snow and ice to melt. And so this is like a cycle. The difference between the snow and glacier albedo effect and the sea ice albedo effect is that snow and glacier are above land, so when it melts, land is exposed. But for sea ice, when the sea ice melts, then the ocean water is exposed. What's the problem? Albedo has been steadily declining since 2000. Between 2000 and 2004, a decrease in albedo of 2.0027 has been measured. You might be thinking, why is this a problem? The decline in albedo leads to net warming on Earth. Here's a graph to prove it. You can see that over these years, albedo has sharply declined. Listed above, we have three things that we want to find out. First, causes of decline in albedo. Second, recommendations to lessen this effect. And third, how does polar snow and ice albedo play a role in climate change? Let's start off with causes of decline in albedo. One of the causes is increase in temperature. The increase in temperature is caused by the increased impact of the greenhouse effect. Due to industrialization, several greenhouse gases have been created and spread out into the Earth's atmosphere. The greenhouse effect traps more heat in, which increases the temperature on Earth. The increase in temperature melts the ice and the snow, which brings me to my next point. Melting of the ice caps is also one of the causes of decline in albedo. As the ice melt, their thickness and their surface area are lessened. That decreases their albedo because the ice caps won't be able to reflect as much heat back. The diagram shown here shows us how much the sea ice has changed from the 1950s to the 2000s, and the prediction of the thickness of the sea ice in the future as well. This is another diagram that shows the decrease in thickness between the span of four years. The third cause is increased pollution, specifically with greenhouse gases and soot. Greenhouse gases connect with the first reason mentioned because they contribute to the impact of the greenhouse effect. Soot is a byproduct of carbon. It's black, so when the soot ends up landing on the snow and the ice, it darkens the surface of the snow and the ice, so more heat is absorbed instead of being reflected out, and that lowers the albedo. In this graph, we can tell the relationship between the temperature and the albedo. You can see as the temperature gets warmer, the albedo decreases. This graph shows the albedo of the Greenland ice sheet. The different colors represent the albedo value for different years. Black line represents 2012, and the decline is very sharp and it marks a new low. What are some recommendations to lessen the decline in albedo? There are a lot of different methods proposed, and they range from simple and straightforward to more complex ones. 
One of these solutions include to paint all the roofs white or to build the roofs and pavements with a paler color for the surface. That way, less heat will be absorbed. This solution was proposed by President Obama's energy advisor. Next, we have geoengineering. This basically means a large-scale change that attempts to correct environmental problems. One of the geoengineering solutions is to place sunshades in space, which is on top. These sunshades would reflect some of the incoming solar radiation even before it enters Earth's atmosphere. Another geoengineering solution is to increase cloud albedo. Clouds also play a big role in determining the Earth's albedo. Thicker and larger clouds are more helpful in reflecting more solar radiation back, meaning they have a higher albedo. To increase the cloud albedo, the idea is to use sea salt spray, which, in, which would increase the concentration of the water droplets in the clouds, and that would help increase the albedo and reflect more energy back. As previously discussed, a decrease in the sea ice thickness and surface area caused a decrease in albedo. This shows that the polar caps play a huge role in climate change since it can affect the albedo. The albedo of polar snow and ice, the area and thickness, and the temperature are all connected and they affect each other. For example, if the thickness of the ice decreased, the albedo would decrease, which means more heat would be absorbed and less heat would be reflected. And in response to that, the temperature would become warmer or the temperature would increase. And that concludes my report on global climate change dealing with decline in albedo. And I hope that all that information was sufficient for the research team and it can help them go further in terms of their research. And thank you for listening.